So, I recently installed these cool driving lights on my vintage car. Uh, but they didn't come with their own wiring, so I went on eBay and I got a generic wiring harness. It's the same type you see all over on Amazon or wherever. It comes with a relay, a little on-off switch, a fused power link, and leads for your lights. So it's basically everything you need. Nice little setup. So everything was going great. I got it all wired up. The switch worked. The lights turned on. But I wanted to get fancy. I had a little factory switch that would fit the dash in this car perfectly. So I went to switch it out without fully understanding how it worked and I ended up melting down most of the wiring harness and almost burning the car to the ground. So I wanted to take a step back and do an educational segment because after that happened I really spent some time learning more about how a system like this is supposed to work. So let's take a look at how switches work and how they're supposed to work in this application with auxiliary lights, how a relay works internally and how it routes the current and hopefully you too can avoid a meltdown. Let's check it out. Okay, I'll try to do a basic explanation of how this works. So you have two sides to this relay. One side is the control side. This is a coil that has a negative on one side, which is 86 in this case, and a switched positive on the other side, which is what you control with your switch. On this side, this is where the main power from the battery will get sent to your lights, but it's on a little switch. So that's why you control it on this side. Basically the job of a relay is to take the main load away from your little switch in your dash because there can be a big current spike and you'd rather handle that with a relay than burning up your switch. So in this case, 30 is the battery positive. That's the one that has the fuse link to the battery. And it also provides the power to the switch. So that would come in here. Now currently this is isolated, it's in the off position. When you turn it on, bam, it's going to connect to this one and this is your trigger wire for the coil, which in this case will come to 85. And that'll ground out, activate the electromagnetic field, which will close this little point here, it's a little contact, and by closing that you get battery positive sent to your light bulbs. In this case, the light bulbs are actually also grounded through 86, but you could also ground them through the chassis. I've got battery negative hooked up to 86, which is how it was originally. And you can see the little contact points there. So if I touch positive to 85, you see those contacts close. And that's how this works. So this is mimicking the switch in the dash. It's causing that to close sending the current to the lights. In the end, what this really came down to was a fundamental difference in how these two switches work. First of all, the one that came with the kit, what threw me off is this ground lug here. So you can see it's a different color, that's how you know it's the ground. What threw me off is I figured, oh, the switch must need a ground for some reason. No, you don't want the switch to ground. You don't want this incoming power to ground out here because you're going to end up with a meltdown like what I had. The only purpose of this ground is for the little light bulb here. So that's what I didn't understand. This is not tied at all to these two. So when the power comes in, it's isolated from this one. And then you flip the switch and it just ties these two together. So this switch, which I also managed to break in half and booger up with super glue, which is a whole nother story, which I'm kind of annoyed about. But anyways, I came to realize with some continuity tests, these two are actually always tied together and this one is isolated. So by having all three of these hot when the switch is on, that's what happens. All three of these are tied together with the switch on. So no wonder it fried the harness. So I should not have connected the ground to this lug, even though all the factory diagrams and the little symbols say, oh, this is the negative. No, I should have thought this through and continuity tested it and realized that allowing this to ground out in the switch was a recipe for disaster. Again, the only purpose of a ground in this application is for the light bulb to light up. 
So in case you're wondering how to test for continuity, which means whether a circuit is open or complete, you got to get yourself a multimeter. It's got multiple things on it, which is why it's called a multimeter. So you put it in ohms to test the resistance, put it in the lowest ohm setting. So I've got it there in 200. This also, I believe, is a continuity mode, but I'll just go in the ohms mode. And you see it says one, that means it's an open circuit. If I touch the leads together, it should go down close to zero, which means it's a complete or closed circuit. So if we take our switch, let's check out this little nugget. You'll notice, and it doesn't really matter which lead you use, it's just finding out whether it's open or closed. So the switch now, I'll put in the off position. And these two I know are the leads that control the power. So you can see it's open, which means these are not connected. They're not going to power anything. But if I switch it on, boom, it goes way down. So it's a closed circuit. So the switch works. But what I realized is if I move this over to the ground lug, it doesn't have any effect whether the switch is on or off. Same if I move this to the middle, no effect. So that's how I realized this ground lug isn't connected to either of these. And that was the aha moment. This one, meanwhile, if I connect one of these to the bottom lug and the other one to the middle, you can see that's actually a closed circuit without the switch being on. So that's problematic. If I go to the top one, that's open, so not completed circuit. If I flip the switch, boom, it works between the top and bottom. So as long as we don't involve that middle lug, it should work fine. Okay, after completely rewiring the system with the new harness, I have now hooked up the switch properly this time. So here's the deal. Battery positive comes in up here. I've put a vacuum cap over that middle post that was so troublesome just to make sure it's isolated and doesn't arc between any of these. And then this one down here is the switched positive. So one of them is going to the relay to turn on the lights. The other one is the positive for the little light bulb. And as far as the negative from the wiring harness, it's only going to the negative for the light bulb. So this is the way to do it. And if I flip the switch, bam. And I see up ahead, the fog lights are on. Heck yeah. So I hope this video helped out. Um, this was originally gonna be all part of the installation video on these lights, but it ended up being kind of long and boring. So I thought it would be its own good little tech video. If you're interested in seeing how I mounted these up and how they work, um, check out my other video. But aside from that, stay safe out there.